Hello, everyone, and welcome to GEG APAC Weekend, Google Educator Groups Asia Pacific. Uh, we do this weekend twice a year where we have speakers who are educators from, you know, not only the Asia Pacific region, but now around the world. And this is installment number six. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and uh, my name is Nate. I'm normally GEG Nagoya in Japan, but I'm actually in Canada on vacation right now uh, for the summer. Uh, so I'm coming at you from early morning Eastern Canada. So uh, I'm going to be drinking my coffee. And, uh, and uh, anyway, talking to you today in this session about Google Geo tools. All right. So I'll get into that in just a, in a moment, but just a few little uh, nuts and bolts uh, to begin with here. So first, if you're watching live, please throw your comments in the, in the comment box. You have to be logged into YouTube to do that um, with, your, uh, with your Gmail account. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments or ideas, please do. Um, also, uh, we will post or I will post in the comments a certificate form. Uh, if you fill the form out, um, you'll get an auto-generated certificate emailed to you. So make sure you put your email account incorrectly when you type that in. Um, and, uh, the GEG APAC website, if you go to Google and Google search and just type in GEG APAC, you're going to find us. And we have things going on every month in multiple languages, just like this weekend. There are other languages, uh, putting on, you know, uh, uh, workshops with a similar theme of empowering students and, uh, getting student voice and student agency out there. Um, so anyway, without further ado, ah, oh, wait, no, 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 I'm, you know, kind of looking at my little notes here. Um, do you want to give a quick shout out, uh, first to, um, uh, to Sangeeta Gulati in India, who, uh, has kind of brought the team together here, uh, to make sure that, uh, we have this weekend go off. And, uh, also especially Sudipta Chatterjee, who's working with me on, uh, the English side of, uh, sessions and that. Thank you so much. So. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into it now, and we're going to talk about Google Geo Tools. And let me just share my screen here, and I'm going to bounce from screen to screen and tab to tab, so please bear with me here. All right. Okay, so this is bringing the world to your classroom. Now, this session... I know people are kind of tired with being online and doing online professional development, and we're now finally getting back to face-to-face. -to -face. So uh, I'm going to keep this kind of short. We'll look at about, you know, 30 minutes at the max. So try to hang in there if you can. So we're going to focus on four things in the session. We're going to look at uh, Google Earth Projects, My Maps, Google Arts and Culture, and one other one that's going to come up first kind of thing. Um, and I'll share that with you because I... I, I think it's kind of special because a lot of people I find don't know about it. Um, but these are not going to be how to, how to create this stuff. These are just going to be, uh, you know, overviews of these different tools and what you can do with them. And, uh, and some examples and samples from, you know, my own teaching practice and that kind of thing. Uh, which is why this is not going to be a long session. This is going to be, hey, this is some cool stuff that's out there. And in particular with Google and geography. Uh, so we're going to look at these four different things, story spheres, earth projects, my maps, and Google arts and culture. Now, I did see something online that Google Expeditions, the virtual reality tour uh, uh, building tool, uh, might be coming back. I haven't seen anything in a while, so I'm not quite sure, but it would be quite, quite nice to see that. All right, so uh, who am I? My name is Nate. Uh, I live in Japan. I'm a diploma program history teacher, and I teach MYP individuals and societies. Uh, um, I have, you know, this on the side uh, technology consultancy that I do, but uh, you can see right there in the slide, I do a whole bunch of different things, Google, as well as some other things too. Um, this slide deck I will share with you in YouTube uh, in the comments, and uh, uh, then you can link to my YouTube channel, Twitter, um, uh, my website and uh, other stuff. All right. So anyway, now here's the thing we're talking about uh, with, uh, you know, Google Geo, right? And I just saw Sudipta saying hello. Thank you, Sudipta. Good to, always good to be working with you and to hear from you. So now in, in 
his well history geography political science economics you know students tend to make a lot of stuff right and they create content and i think uh, the tools that I'm going to show you are all pretty much like students and teachers creating content. So we do have to briefly talk about best practices, right? Um, now, yes, we use content to, uh, you know, to learn and, and, you know, find information. But at the same time, a lot of these tools, we can make content as well. And when we do that, especially, here's some things to think about. Equity, honesty, right? We want to be sure that we're representing different parts of the world that we may not know very well, may have never traveled to. Um, we want to represent them in the, um, not necessarily in a positive light. It might not be the most positive uh, topic that you're exploring, but you want to be honest, right? So we have to be aware of our own biases and things like that. Uh, think of your audience and your purpose, right? A lot of text is going to be used for, if, well, if you're a high school teacher, you might put more text in one of these things uh, than you would if you were teaching students in grades three or four, for example. I also say do your research first. Uh, it makes creating stuff. I just encourage my students to do their research first. I require it, but it doesn't always happen that way, right? Um uh, and always credit where you get your sources, whether it's information or photos or that kind of thing. Always, always have to give uh, credit to where it is due, right? That's academic honesty. And if you're using videos and text and images and things, um, try, to, uh, try to get them uh, you know, prepared ahead of time. All right, so here is our first uh, tool that I want to introduce. And this is called Google Story Spheres. Now, what is that, you ask? Uh, I do find that a lot of people don't know it. So let me show you an example first. A couple of examples. The kicker here with this one is having the 360 degree imagery. Here's a place from where I, uh, I currently live in Japan. It's about a five minute bicycle ride. All right, so now I've used my Ricoh Theta camera kind of expensive. Not everyone can afford a 360 degree camera. I get that. If your school can afford one, uh, you know, for the school to use, sign it out with your IT people. I think it is a valuable investment. Oh, look, you can see me trying to hide right there. Um, but as you can see, I've taken this 360 degree photo of a shrine. Uh, this, there is a way to actually cover up and put like a logo in there. Um, I don't quite know how to do it. I had a friend, uh, Daryl teach me, but I've forgotten. But here's an example of a Shinto shrine about five minutes away from where I live. And think of an interesting, you know, wouldn't that be interesting for your students to snap photos of, you know, culturally significant places in their neighborhood? Now, if they don't have a Rico Theta, you can actually do this with a phone if your students have a phone where they actually snap a whole pile of photos that are stitched together in Google Street View. But that's another workshop. But if your school can afford uh, a 360 uh, photo, then uh, there are creative ways, I think, that you can use it. Here, I'll just uh, kind of Okay, so you can see you can you can add like uh, audio as well. So the, you know, this thing here is referred to as a hotspot. Um, now, you can't add photo hotspots, which is a bit of a bummer, uh, because I think photo hotspots are really cool, too. And also, you can't create a story. Um, you can only just kind of create one photo and then talk about the specific place. But it is pretty cool. Um, I just noticed um, we've got PSV10621, Muhammad Rafuddin bin Abdurrahim. Uh, good evening, my friend. Back to you. Thanks a lot for uh, checking in. Tell us where you're, you're, contact, you're joining us from. I know Sudeep is in India. I'm in Canada. So uh, yeah, if you're if you're you're watching, tell us where you're from uh, and where you're watching from. That is all right. So that's Google Story Spheres. I think I will show you one other one. Uh, this is a controversial place in Japan, uh, Yasukuni Shrine. And there's a bit of a story to this, but I'm not going to get into it. But uh, there I am, right there. You know, taking this photo a number of years ago. Um, but you notice I've got multiple hotspots in here. And that's what I wanted to kind of show you is that um, you can put like, you know, more than one hotspot in there. And you can share these with your students. This, you know, the link at the top in the URL in the Omnibox, sorry. Um, you can share that. And then great for flipped learning, I think, right? Um, so 
Now it's Google Story Spheres. Um, I will point out that you do have to, you do have to, oops, sorry, let me go back here. You do have to create the audio files yourself and it only uses MP3. Um, finding 360 degree images um, without watermarks and for free is a bit of a challenge. That's why I suggested using a Rico Theta. Uh, theta. Um, but uh, I, I, I think it's a fun activity for kids to actually do stuff with 360 degree images. Um, and if you can get the images yourself, like, you know, snap them of different parts of your school, then the young kids can actually create this stuff. Um, it's pretty intuitive. It's pretty user friendly. Uh, I don't have a tutorial on this on my website or my YouTube channel, but uh, one will be coming sometime, but not soon. <laughs> Sorry. Now, I do recommend, uh, thanks, Sadeepta. It is quite interesting, isn't it? Here's the thing with YouTube. I, I feel that we don't leverage YouTube enough. And if you're sticking around from uh, 9 o'clock Japan Standard Time, so like, you know, uh, well, less than an hour from now, I'm going to do a session on YouTube and we'll look at 360 videos. But here's an example of, um, uh, you know, taking 360 video. Again, this is, uh, you know, these are my videos that I've taken. But in fact, you know what? Let's, let's not do that, actually. Let's just kind of search. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me go to whole YouTube right here and do, 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 do. let's go with um, Roman history. I don't know, ancient history kind of thing, right? Okay, so now here's the thing. So I've just typed in Roman history, but right here we got filters, right? You can see that if I tap on that, I can scroll over to here and see where it says 360. I can click 360 as a filter. And so, you know, then I have these different videos that have some kind of 360 degree, uh, you know, element to it, right? Here's the Colosseum. I mean, I haven't seen this one before. Uh, let's see. Let me go with the one that I think I might know. Um, you'll, you'll, you might have to search around a little bit to find that ideal one. Notice I have my uh, audio kind of muted here. You notice up here in the top left, that'll tell you that it's a 360 degree uh, video, right? Let me just kind of scroll around. Maybe this is the one that I really want here. Let me go with that one right here. The new floor. Whoops. All right. So, oh, that's not a 360 video. I made that mistake. But my point is that you can look at, you know, you can use 360 video in your classroom. Uh, when you're teaching history, geography, and that kind of thing, right? These are Google Geo tools, but they're not necessarily just, um, you know, history, geography, and that kind of thing. So that's kind of cool, you know, that reconstruction in 360 of what, uh, you know, a Roman, you know, villa or city may have looked like. So so keep that in mind. And that's, that's kind of my point about YouTube, right? Um, if you're curious, when I share this uh, video, I've got these, uh, or sorry, this uh, uh, slide presentation, you, you can see these different videos in 360 where I narrate the history uh, of different parts of Japan that I've gone to, which I think are kind of cool. So put YouTube in your, uh, in your repertoire. I think YouTube's got a lot to offer when it comes to uh, uh, teaching history and geography and, and you know, that kind of thing. All right, let me... Actually, you know what? I think I will take a moment to show you this because I, I, I do want you to see how, uh, what it kind of looks like to, uh, to, you know, see your own video made with your own narration. These 360 degree uh, cameras like the Ricoh Theta, for example, they take video as well as uh, just still photos, right? So let me just pull this one up here. I'm going to undo the audio. Who's that guy? <laughs> so I think, you know, I feel that that's kind of cool, right? I mean, uh, if, imagine like uh, your students putting together photos of uh, 360 photos of their, their school or something like that. Um, and yes, Sudeepta, as you pointed out, uh, YouTube definitely helps with teaching English. 
uh, I would think, you know, not only languages, but any subject, there's so much good stuff out there on YouTube, right? So it's not limited to just the subjects that I love kind of thing. All right, moving on to the next one here, Google Earth Projects. Um, I absolutely love Google Earth Projects. Um, so essentially, well, let, let me let me show you what it is first. But keep in mind that uh, as you look, it's it's multimedia. You can use video, audio. Uh, you can embed and things like that. Again, this is not a tutorial. This is a hey, this stuff is out there. Uh, there's a tutorial right there that you can use. So if you're like, how do I make that? It's right there. And I will share this slide deck with you, okay? Uh, let's see. Here's one that I think is kind of cool. Modern technology, but ancient ideas. Now, uh, one thing with Google Earth Projects, unless you have quick Wi-Fi and a fast computer like I have right now, it might take a little time to load, all right? So right now you're looking at the building uh, version. But if you share your URL with students, this is what they're going to see. Now, again, this is something that your students can use to create their own content. And Google, Google Earth Projects, you can work collaboratively. So you, the teacher, can create the project and then invite the students to, to build on it. So as I show you each different place in the world um, that we travel to, uh, you could actually have your students working on one different place on their own. This is such an easy, uh, user-friendly, intuitive, uh, collaborative tool. Um, so uh, this is what's called a you know a full you know, sorry a, a full slide. Uh, but I tell you what, let's uh, now. Here's the thing: you've you've got the table of contents. Uh, the nature of this topic is that students could go anywhere they want. They could just explore their interest, but. Uh, if you have a chronological approach to it, then uh, you just have to click on the arrow right there at the bottom. Uh, note here, too, though, I've got my you know image source for this image, and we're excited for, uh, for these different uh, stories here. So look at this. This is kind of cool, right? You know, you kind of, woo, drugstores in the Arab world, and then it kind of takes you to where you are. And if you want, or where this, you know, place in history was in the world. Now, here we only have... Um, uh, one image, but let me also show you, like if these little blue lines here, if I want to drop, you know, this peg person here, watch what happens. This is kind of cool. So it gives students the chance to explore a little bit more. And in the tutorial video, uh, you will be taught how to actually force this view on people. And I'll show you what that looks like in another example. Let me just uh, go here. All right, so here's another interesting topic, circumcision in ancient Egypt. But hey, you know, <laughs> this, this is the real world in ancient Egypt. Uh, let me jump, see if we have, uh, okay, this is what I want to see. This, you know, brain surgery, trepanation, it's called actually, right? Uh, so here I have my image, but if I scroll this way, ooh, I have a video. And if I tap on that, um, now my students can also watch added content outside of this Google Earth project that I've created, right? which is kind of neat. Um, so again, like, you know, I can add a whole pile of different images. Uh, you can add up to like 25 images and videos uh, uh, with each different place in your, your Google Earth project, right? So if you have 10 different places, you could have up to 25, uh, sorry, 250 videos and photos, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, again, going back to the beginning here when I was talking, put your, your sources here, where do you get your stuff? Um, okay, so let me close this one. And I think discoveries, no, it's St. Pat, St. Valentine's Day. I know I've got something cool in there that I want to show you. And again, if you have any questions, comments, please throw it in the chat. I just love my new computer. It's so fast. Okay, so this, well, actually... <laughs> Thought it was fast, but uh, maybe it's taking a little bit of time to load here because there's supposed to be a big image of St. Valentine. Um, but it, what I want to highlight is notice this text here is highlighted in blue, which means it is linked. So my point is you can actually add external stuff. You could link things. OK, so at the moment, I can't open this Kahoot, but if I log in, I definitely can. Right. So. Let me just go to our first place here. All right, again, you can see here, 
Uh, got some videos and images of St. Valentine. I want to, I think here, this is uh, where we're at. Now watch when I click here. Boom, look at that. I created that. I have forced the viewer to actually come in and look at this, you know, like Santa Maria in Cosmedian, you know, uh, a church in Rome, apparently. Now, this is an image that comes from, you know, Google Street View. Um, and that's the thing, too. You can't upload your own uh, 360 images in Google Earth projects. You have to use Google Street View. But still, that's pretty cool, right? Like, you know, when students are going to different places, boom, there they, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're automatically have to go there. Uh, if my eyes are going this way, uh, by the way, folks, because I'm looking at my phone here, I want to keep uh, keep track of the time, but I also want to keep track of uh, your comments. And please put your comments in. All right. Uh, let's see. Let me close that one up. And uh, yeah, so if you want, you can have a look at these uh, different uh, examples of Google Earth projects. Um, but again, it's uh, user friendly. Uh, something, you know, you can, oh, well, you know what, let me, let me go to the end of this one right here. I, I do this with most of my earth projects, but not all of them. Um, but yeah, look at that. I have so many citations in that one. All right. So here's an example of, you know, a nice background image, um, and then a link to a, uh, a video that students can watch, right? The, the story of Christmas. I do have here though at some point do, 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 maybe maybe it's at the beginning or maybe i'm just mixing up my different uh my different stories here um my point is i do have linked to some of these earth projects like different um different places where things are embedded where students can oh yeah look at that that's the end but here test your knowledge for example so i've got kahoot quizlet flippity uh, Google Forms, escape rooms. So basically, I put these things at the end uh, of uh, of some of these tours that I do, and then students can have some fun with what they've just read through and learned. Um, so, and and these are all just you know links to Google Forms or things I've made on Flippity, that kind of thing. So I do encourage you to uh, to to play around with Google Earth projects. I do think it's super cool and it's very easy to use. And as I mentioned. You've got a tutorial video right there. It has not changed a lot in the last, uh, uh, well, since it was launched uh, just before the pandemic, uh, 2019 in November, actually. All right, so the last one that I'm going to get into is Google My Maps. And uh, again, there's a tutorial on how you can create uh, maps with Google My Maps. I will also point out that uh, there are there is a way where you can quickly make a Google Map with using Google Sheets, Google Forms, and Google Sheets to, uh, to create a map with your students. Uh, I'm not going to show you that today because we're trying to keep this short, right? You know, screen time and that kind of thing. Pandemic, video, fatigue, online PD. Uh, but just to let you know, there is a tutorial here that you can watch on your own time for how to use Google Forms to create a My Map. And of course, just how to make Google My Maps if you don't know. Now, I will say... Uh, the amazing Wendy Peskett is going to be doing a detailed presentation on Google My Maps in the curriculum, uh, and, and that'll be happening tomorrow. So uh, I encourage you to check her out. I'm going to be tweeting out uh, reminders of, hey, check out that cool session. So if you're interested in My Maps, please check out Wendy's presentation tomorrow. All right, so let me show you a couple of different things. Uh, the first, first thing I want to show you, um, I guess, let me explain what Google My Maps does first. Um, essentially, it pins different places uh, on Earth, and you can add content such as videos, photos. Uh, you can kind of personalize it. And again, students and the teacher can work collaboratively in real time, you know, creating uh, a large map with a whole bunch of pins. Now, I want to show you a couple of examples. I'm going to start with a travel diary. Um, I was teaching summer school. And, uh, and I, you know, wanted to embed technology and, you know, this one's a little bit old now, but um, yeah, 2016. So this is six years old now, but um, essentially we had the students in the class pin places that they had traveled to over the summer kind of thing. So it was our world travelogue. 
Uh, so, you know, for example, here's one student actually that uh, had gone to New Caledonia, a place I want to go to. Uh, and this is what she, uh, she kind of put together. And if you click on the photos, you can see the photos that she chose. Now, these ones did, I believe, come from Google. Excuse me. But you can upload your own photos as well. And again, this is not a tutorial session. This is a, uh, you know, hey, this is the cool stuff that you can do with this session. Um, you note know, here she chose a fish for her pin. Yes, you can do that. Here's a student that chose this place in Niagara Falls. Uh, and of course, the falls. Uh, and well, these two, uh, again, students were really thinking when I said, hey, when you choose your your icon for your pin, really think about the place. And the anchor makes sense and the fish makes sense. I thought it was really, really clever, right? Uh, and this is one uh, that uh, Toshogu, I don't know if I put this together. Maybe it was uh, one of the students that did. But uh, but anyway, again, Shinto, um, you know, there's a Shinto shrine in the area. Uh, so that kind of makes sense, right? So the point is, here's a topic that is not necessarily, um, you know, history, geography, social studies. It could be just something like, how was your summer, everyone? Let's, you know, put this together or let's get to know each other better by sharing a place in the world you love. And uh, hey, Sudipta, thank you. It is kind of a cool idea, right? Isn't it fun? Um, and the students enjoyed it and they learned a little bit. Now here is an idea I got from the amazing Chris Betcher down in Australia. Um, that he was taking an example. Um, to go back to Sudipta who was saying like, hey, in English, you can use YouTube for a lot of stuff as well. And I agree. Um, but here's a book. Now, I haven't read this book, but uh, Panikin and Pinta, apparently it's a couple of penguins that, uh, you know, they're traveling around Australia. And, uh, and here's an example of a teacher uh, that was using this in their class. And, and they pinned, you know, the, the journey of these two penguins. I, I think they were penguins, uh, you know, as they go through the story, which is a great idea, right? Now, there's not a lot written here, but um, this is like, uh, you know, just kind of a good example of where you could actually use literature to tell the story in a book um, around the world in 80 days. Right. I think Jules Verne, um, you know, think about telling that story uh, by using Google My Maps or even Google Earth Projects. Right. Which would be kind of cool. Um, so let me close this up. <clears throat> uh do 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 conflict story oh wait actually let me go to plate tectonics first because we'll mix it up a bit now here is an example of the polygon uh feature that you can use these now this this plate tectonics map was made by one of my students uh back in like 20 uh, was it 2019 i must have made a copy of this because i know i have a student that made this you know years ago and uh yeah, it must have been a copy because we don't have the text and the information here. Um, but basically, your students, uh, you know, could use a polygon to highlight a certain part of uh, the world. And yes, you can zoom in. I've used this tool to highlight, you know, specific castles in Japan, for example. And you can put all the text in here if you want uh, and that kind of thing. So here's an example of where there's not a lot of text here, uh, obviously. But if you wanted to, you could make a really interesting project with using the polygon tool. And really, it's just a matter of tap, drawing your line around the different places. Um, so, you know, that that tool exists as well. Um, so it, and it doesn't have to be big like the world, like these, you know, tectonic plates. It could be actually just, uh, you know, like the outline of a house or something like that. Whoops. Let me go back here. Uh, all right. So as we kind of wind down just a little bit, um, I will show like the American Revolution. This is uh, something that another teacher uh, kind of created. Um, and, you know, basically they had the students create this map. And if you look in, they've used the polygon feature. They've used the different icon changes. Um, they've actually used photos for icons and each different place you know, has a little bit of a story. Again, it's not super well developed, but it does serve the, you know, as an example of what you can do. All right. And I keep going ahead when I do that. Um, do, 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 do. Let me go with uh, conflict stories. So here's an example of, now this comes from one of my grade nine classes. Uh, we did this last year. Um, 2021, but we were actually in the classroom. We were not online, uh, you know, doing the the uh, online teaching thing. 
But uh, you can see here, students had done their research on different um, parts of the world where there was conflict and they created their own videos. Now, when we put this together, their videos hadn't been created because uh, the plan was we're going to link your video here. Well, that's a little bit wonky, um, all those images right there. But uh, here's an example of where students could do a quick synopsis. So their videos were quite long, but um, I had them do a quick synopsis of uh, the place where they discussed their conflict and they filled it out in a Google form. And then I took the Google form to quickly create a Google My Map. And if you have students fill out a form, all you have to do is uh, upload the, the Google Sheet with all the information and data, and then you can automatically create a My Map. Now, there, is a, there are a few things you need to know in terms of how to do it. So look at the tutorial video if you're like, hey, I wanna try that. Um, let me just let the loose, so just in the news. All right, so here's another one that uh, my students created. Um, so again, like I can click on the pins and uh, basically uh, what they had done was uh, uh, look at things happening in the news and they summarized uh, a couple of sources. Uh, note that they've got the, you know, a photo here that they had to upload to the Google form. Um, if, they, if, if I wanted to really go deeply into this, then I would have um, uh, you know, had them uh, add their own photos and videos and things. I, we could have done much more with this, but this was just a really short uh, assessment kind of thing, right? But again, this is a map that was created by students using a Google form. And I just really quickly had to upload uh, their synopsis. And, and, and what was the point of this assessment is to show that conflict is happening around the world um, and in different forms, whether it's you know, a protest movement or an insurgency or even a civil war. Uh, you know, conflict is a human thing. Uh, it's not limited to certain parts of the world. It's, it's around the world. And when we created this map, we could highlight that. Hey, look, conflict happens everywhere, right? Um, so when I realized, too, that I had said earlier that uh, this is the last one we're going to go through, but I lied. We're going to look at Google Arts and Culture very briefly because I think arts and culture is just really cool. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the uh, Go ahead and put them in the uh, in the chat. And after the broadcast, if you're watching this and you have comments or questions, please type them into the uh, the comments in YouTube as well. All right. So Google Arts and Culture. We'll just do a real quick overview of like some of the different things that are here. Uh, I really think Arts and Culture has a lot to offer for the classroom. And yes, I do use it uh, in my own classes. Um, you, you can explore places, museums. There's works of art. And there are some fun games as well. Uh, and some cool augmented reality stuff. So let me just uh, actually click on that and close that one up. Um, so you notice here, uh, here, this is a new landing page. They've done some updates here. You can quickly click on these different buttons if you wanna you know, go to, uh, you know, if you know what you're looking for. I'm looking for an historical figure or an historical event. Uh, you can just click on, for example, historic events and then it's gonna take you to a whole pile of images. And you can see here, for example, the Cold War, 9,770 different uh, photos or videos or AR uh, reproductions or something like, you know, or that kind of thing. Um, you know, you could search by time as well, right? So, right, so the Ottoman Wars in Europe during the period of the Ottoman Empire or Edo, Japan, Japan, hey, where I live, 250 versus 28 items. Um, it's something your students can use when they're looking for, uh, whether it's information or images, that kind of thing. I mean, for example, if we click on the Edo period, uh, you know, I do have, you know, a little bit of information. I've got a link to Wikipedia, and then I have all these different images that I can kind of scroll through. Uh, again, it really depends on, you know, the topic, whether you have a lot or a little. Um, all right. And again, so scrolling down, uh, <laughs> Can you guess where BTS are? Gotta love that, right? Um, let's see. So you can make your own street art gallery kind of thing with you know different images and that. I'm not going to get into that because again, this is not a how-to. Um, let's see. Let me go down here uh, again. Games. If you want to check out like uh, you know like certain games, let me just click on more games here. Um, let's see. Uh, there's the one. There's one that I kind of enjoyed. Uh, I, the music stuff, I kind of like, uh, you know, the blob opera, this one's really fun. 
So let me just load, launch the, they call these experiments, right? Drag to sing base. Okay, I'm gonna skip the tutorial. Um, my, my point is you can go through here. Let me just, uh, if I click record, let me, um, whoops. Anyway, you can, and you can actually, okay, let me close that. Uh, yes, I'm going to exit. But my point is, you know, like your students could actually play around, have a little bit of fun with that. And so can you, right? Um, so let me go back home. I, and, and the point is that uh, there are different games you can play. So I, I encourage you to kind of like, uh, you know, explore that. And speaking of explore, um, we do have the explore tab. Let me go to nearby first. Um, I don't have to allow my location. Okay, I got it turned off. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let me put that in. Yeah, I'm going to like Chrome and like Siri now. All right, let me close that. All right, so so here, if I want to do, 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 do let me refresh here. I, I have noticed that uh, it kind of defaults to going to France. <laughs> uh, we've got, uh, yeah, Muhammad is saying that uh, the blobs look like uh, minions. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, I agree. Um, okay, so Full Sail's Museum, this is like, you know, like literally like less than a kilometer. I, I actually did some, uh, when I was studying my history degree, I did some uh, uh, research work with the the society that deals with these people kind of thing. All right, so uh, my point is you can find different museums and things close to you just by clicking on nearby. Um, let's see, if I click on play, again, there's different games and, and quizzes and things like that. If I click on favorites, now these are galleries and items that I have, I have clicked on favorite. So, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute because with Explore, you just, if you like something, you click on favorite. Now I've created these galleries, by the way, this one Renaissance art, for example. So uh, with the images, which all come from museums and, uh, and, and you know, like uh, academic websites um, and, you know, this stuff's copyright free you can create your own galleries. So if I was to create, you know, this gallery here, um, you know, I click on edit and then, you know, I can add things to it. Notice here, I've made it public. I've given my own topic. Uh, let me just close that. And, you know, if I want, all I have to do is click the share button and then I can share it through Google Classroom or whatever, or I can copy the link and then post it in the Google Classroom stream or even on Twitter because I've made it, you know, public. Um, so you could use this for your classes or for other people, you know, kind of thing to enjoy as well, right? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let me go back. All right, so let me click on Explore here. Now, if you click on Explore, at the top here, you can see you've got these different, um, uh, you know, like thumbnails, I guess. So you can look at 360 videos. You can look at Street View. Street View giving you like a different augmented reality uh, 360 images and things like that. Excuse me, if you click on videos, uh, I encourage you to scroll through, have a look. There might be something that uh, uh, might you might be able to use, like the sea dragon. This one's really cool. The dragon, uh, you're in a museum and it goes to this dragon and then it fills up with water and the dragon comes to life and starts swimming through the museum. Um, so you, and you basically you've got these 360 uh, videos and uh, you know, well, 360 videos, right? So check them out. Uh, I will show you the street view with famous places. I do use the one from the Palace of Versailles in France. If you scroll down here, I'll choose this one. If you see these little, you know, peg person, it's called peg man, but I'm going to call it peg person. Uh, if you click on that, then you're going to get links to you know, these 360 images of the Palace of Versailles, right? And note here at the top, you can share all of this stuff, you know, with your students. So you could share the specific links if you want, where, you know, you could do observational skills or just try to really get them interested. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, let me just quickly go back here. Uh, so I, I encourage you to explore. And I guess that's kind of my point here, right? Explore um, 
Google Arts and Culture because there's a lot going on in there. I think it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so now what I'm going to do though is kind of end the session. I know well, we're getting down to 45 minutes here, so I lied. Um, when I share this slide with you, I'm not going to go through this one, but I've got uh, uh, an unfinished slide deck on teaching sustainable development goals (SDGs). Uh, here are some ideas that uh, you might want to think about because, let's face it, SDGs are geo. Um, not as much, uh, you know, just Google. There's just other ideas where you can use Google tools and other stuff to teach SDGs. So remember to keep in touch. I've got a YouTube channel, Twitter, uh, my website. And uh, if you want to use this or any other slide deck, you can make a copy. It's nice if you give credit to the person that made it. Uh, I've had people copy my decks and pretend that they put all the work in, but uh, and I've seen that before, but let's be academically honest. I really don't need credit. Just tell people, I didn't make this slide deck, <laughs> but I'm going to use it. Uh, here are places where you can find me. But again, I'm going to put this slide deck in, uh, uh, in the YouTube comments in just one moment. All right. So that was Be an Explorer. Bring the world to your classroom. Again, overviews uh, and ideas, not actually how-to, but you can get the how-to videos that are... Uh, for different things linked in uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, there we go. Linked in the um, uh, slide deck and all that kind of thing. So let me just stop sharing my screen here so you don't have to get that ugliness. And I know you've had my face kind of close here, but uh, let's just go slides deck. I'm going to post that so you can, you can have access to everything that we've done. And I'm going to post the Google Educator Group, GEG, APAC website so you can see all the other stuff that's going on throughout the year and uh, over this weekend. And finally, yeah, let me, whoops, I uh, didn't mean to put that in, but uh, you know what I will do? I'm going to throw a banner in here so you can, there we go, find us at GEG, APAC. I, I'm going solo here, so it's hard to kind of, uh, do things all at the same time. Uh, all right, so let me give you one more comment. Now here is a certificate. Certificate for participation. If you fill this out, uh, you will automatically get an email uh, sent to you. So uh, with a certificate email to you. So if you, uh, if you don't get a response, then you probably put your email address in uh, incorrectly, right? But uh, anyway, we will send you a certificate automatically. Uh, all you have to do is fill out that form. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for joining us here. Uh, I'm going to end the broadcast in a moment. Check out Google Geo Tools. You can contact me through Twitter. Uh, I am at Nathan Gildart. And uh, uh, if you have any questions or you want our classes to connect and collaborate, then hey, let's do that. Uh, 15 minutes, I got a session on YouTube. That should be about 30 minutes. But of course, if you haven't noticed, I've gone on a little bit long. Um, so 30, 45 minutes, perhaps, um, on YouTube in the classroom and not just using videos. Uh, so I hope to see you there in about 15 minutes. And thank you again, Sudeepta, for joining here and all the background work that you are doing. Uh, it's been fabulous working with you between Canada and India. Way, way cool. Loads of other great sessions going on, everybody, this weekend. Please enjoy. Take care.